All right, uh, this is Book Talk with Corbin. I'm your host. Uh, we have a returning guest, a, a good friend of the show, Arena Baptiste. I hope I'm saying your name correctly, sis. <laughs> I only speak one language, and that's Kentucky English. <laughs> it's, barely, it's barely accepted in other parts of the United States. But I think I got the, the first name correct. And um, folks, she really gave us some great insights on the situation in Cuba, you know, what it meant to be raised in that whole, you know, socialist uh, system, and she trained Marxist, things of that nature. And then she talked about her conversion to Christianity. Very powerful, uh, very powerful story testimony. Go to my website at booktalkwithcorbin.com and uh, pull up her, her interview. You'll get a lot. you get a lot from it. Sis, today I wanted to talk to you, spend the next 15 minutes talking to you about some sort of update on the situation in Cuba. I don't really get the impression that much has been said in the mainstream media. I do know the brothers and sisters of theirs were, were basically sort of uprising. I've never seen that before. Nothing and sense. what, what, you know, what can you tell us what's going on right now? Well, Corbin, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure talking to you and, and having the opportunity to impact your audience. And uh, you're right. Nothing is being said on the, on, social, on the media, but we already know that the media will not talk about important topics. So even topics that are essential for the, the, the American people, um, they, they try to cover the, the border and everything. So can you imagine? Mm -hmm. if, will they talk about Cuba? Basically, when you remember Barack Obama went there, went to yes. Cuba. Yes. And by all means, the current administration is a continuation of that administration for so many reasons. None the least of which is that they have the same excellent relationship with the dictatorship with Cuban, with the Castro communism in Cuba. They have the same relationship. For that reason, you see, they um, have moved away and returned to Haiti, the people that have recently migrated. To Cubans, they simply stood up and tell them, don't go. Hmm. You remember that when the 11th of July, I mean, from our last conversation tonight, between the, our last conversation and this one, 11th of July happened, meaning the Cubans is, uh, uh, went into the streets. And that very uh, powerful first uh, a flow of people to the streets, sick and tired of communism, sick and tired of oppression, sick and tired of hunger, famine, and the most Corbin, the most inhumane way of living and dying. Mm. The most inhumane way of living and dying. Mm. That uh, 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 when people went there, the, when, when Cubans decided that it was time to go into the streets, it was the result of a really strong work job done by the, the influencers but the fact that the internet have arri has arrived in Cuba and people get the opportunity to tell on their own words the tragedy they're living. Mm -hmm. Right, and I, I think that's, that's, a key, that's a key statement you said there, say in their own words, speak yes. for themselves. And, yes. and also, you know, I think it's a great tragedy that you know, from your perspective, you have to give us the bad news. No, they're not really, the mainstream media is really not giving us, um, you know, daily updates and things like that. They're not really giving us good coverage. And yet, you know, Cuban Americans have been such an important part of the, the growth and progress in this country. I mean, they're a very important community in Florida. They're a very important community here in Louisville. Hey, I want to know what's going on, period. You know, Cuban Americans have... have Yes, people yeah. have been taking it to the streets. You have seen the demonstrations, which have not been publicized by the media at all. Right. There was this huge, massive demonstration in, in Washington, D.C., that they also tried to silence, and it was 60,000 Cubans in Washington, hmm. D.C. I don't know if you know the numbers, but there were 60,000 Cubans in Washington, D.C., in front of the White House, speaking with President Biden, just hmm. to, to, to grant to the Cuban people a humanitarian intervention 
is not a military intervention, Corbyn, it's mm. humanitarian. And how did the Biden administration respond? Have you ever heard nobody ever go to Cuba to do absolutely nothing? Well, mm. you know, nothing has been done. So if you were, let, let's, let's pretend that I'm going to give you three minutes with President Biden, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris, and their top advisors. I want you to talk to them about, hey, here's what you can do. Here are like two or three things you can do to help the Cuban people. What would you say? First of all, President Biden, if you can grant the Cubans the right to have access to the Internet, mm. the first thing that has to be done is to let the stories come out, let the truth come out. Second of all, President Biden, our country is in a desperate plea. People are dying in the middle of the street. They are corpses in the street, corpses that have been buried. And there is such a lack of, ha- of, of manpower to handle the, the, the pandemic that mm. even in the graveyards, people are laying dead with the, the graves wide open wow. and vultures eating the remains. Mm. We desperately need a, a corpse, a, a humanitarian corpse, the, the UN corpse, a, a, a corpse to help just to handle the amount of sick and dying people. Can you imagine President Biden in our hospitals with dead people are laying mm. next to people who are gravely ill with the COVID pandemic? Mm. And third of all, and most important of all, President Biden, stop supporting the regime that is killing my people. Mm. It's a pretty powerful statement, and we hope somehow or another that, uh, you know, President Biden hears that and touches his heart in some fashion, form or another, and, and responds. Because everything you said is, is perfectly reasonable. I mean, access to the Internet so that we can so that the folks can speak for themselves. Uh, you know, simple humanitarian assistance. I mean, come on. I mean, and then, you know, those things are perfectly reasonable, per- perfectly uh, sensible. Let's go back a little bit in history. How did you how did you view the Biden administration, I mean, not the, the Obama administration's uh, relationship with Cuba? Were they helpful, hurtful, combination of the two? The relationship, the way I see it, Corbin, and I don't want to make it uh, uh, um, a one side or other side uh, issue. Mm-hmm. But the matter of the fact, the undeniable fact, is that every time that the Democrats have been in power, the government have a field day the Cuban Mm. government have a field day, they are very much, um, they are very much in a kind of like, like bromance with each other. They, they court each other. And the Obama administration was nonetheless, as a matter of fact, we know that the, the dry food, wet food, uh, wet dry feed, wet feed uh, law that President Bush passed was repelled on Mm. his very last day in the government by President Obama. He did not repel it before. I, did, I don't think he will. He, I, he did. That was a calculated move. He knew he was getting out of the White House. He knew that the consequences, the backlash from those consequences were not going to be suffered by his administration. So he waited until the very last minute to comply or to, to not to comply. I don't think he was complain, com, a compliant. He was granting to somebody something that somebody else told him, you have to, this has to be done. Mm-hmm. But we don't want you to suffer the consequences. We want you to, to wait until the very last minute. And when nobody can do anything because there is a next president coming in, do it. Mm-hmm. And he just uh, revoke a dry feed, wet feed. Wow. The consequences has been there are 10,000 Cubans, 10, Cubans in the border right now. Well, well. This is Book Talk with Corbin. I'm your host. Uh, go to our website. Uh, go to my website, booktalkwithcorbin.com. And this sister, and look up this sister's, uh, our first, first interview with this sister here. Very powerful speaker. Great, um, just a great American uh, and fantastic uh, Cuban patriot. And uh, sister, you also... Uh, Preach the gospel, don't you? Uh, yes, ma'am. 
Yes, ma'am, that's great. So I don't I don't know how this whole COVID thing is impacting some people's travel, but if someone from a, another state wanted you to come and preach and not only come preach but also talk about Cuba, would you be open to that? I will. I will. As a matter of fact, it, you know, COVID have, it has impacted uh, in many ways. We have lost so much pastors right here in town. Mm. Last week, we had to bury one pastor to, to COVID. But uh, tell you what, it have impacted our ability to, to maybe just move around. But there is groups of intercessors in town mm. uh, that through Zoom, uh, Facebook, uh, Messenger, and WhatsApp are praying. Mm. At 5 a.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., and 10 p.m. in the nighttime, mm -hmm. every single day. Those wow. are groups of women, uh, Hispanic women, that are in, making intercession non nonstop mm. for the sick, for the dying, for the people at the border, for the people that are suffering, you know, in different places. Right. Uh, we, this is what we're doing, really, actually, more than going out and preaching that, you know, it has severe problems. Right. But the intercession, okay. the, the intercession doesn't stop. We are working hard at it. Fantastic, fantastic. And since I wanted to wrap up this interview and talking a little bit about, and, and your perspective is really, I mean, it's invaluable. Um, Asata Shakur, as you know, Sata Shakur was a member of the Black Liberation Army, basically yeah. it was a terrorist organization. Yeah, they, uh, she was involved in the murder of a New Jersey police officer and another New Jersey police officer was severely um, injured. Uh, she got a fair and fee trial here in the United States. She was convicted. Um, then she escaped and went into the underground and eventually ended up in Cuba. Like so many, uh, you know, so-called revolutionaries from the United States, they would uh -huh. run to Cuba for asylum. So, you know, could you give us some perspective, your perspective on, on someone like Asata Shakur and, and others like her who are basically criminals? Yeah, I'll tell you something. Uh, Corbin, uh, Asata Shakur and the rest of the criminals that have been, you know, uh, received and uh, who lived in Cuba. If you remember this guy who recently died, even uh, McAfee hmm. was with his wife in Cuba very recently up until the time that he got, I guess, the, the FBI caught him and he died in jail. They say whatever it is they say about his death, the circumstances of his death happens to be the reality of the Cuban government is that the Cuban government has been a haven for people who are essentially terrorists. Mm. But I do believe that the fact of this lady is still there in Cuba shows something that is, goes beyond herself. She is the proof that the, the Black community, the African-American community in the United States have a deep ignorance about the Cuban realities. Yes. Yes. The yeah. same government that received very handsomely Jay-Z and Beyonce mm -hmm. also went to Cuba, if you remember. Yes. That same government have one of the musicians who, uh, the composer of the Patria Ibida song, who have become the battle, the, the battle song and the battle cry of Cubans all over the world. Mm. And that was one of the, 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 the triggers for the 11th of July uh, um, civil disobedience expressions and demonstrations in the country. Mm. Do you know that one of these, of that there's two of the musicians who composed the song, they had to do it in hiding. Mm. Wow. Because the government was after them. And one of them has been currently disappeared. People don't know where the guy is. Mm. But since for the, level, for the last 30 days, Michael Osorbo is, is, is disappeared, have disappeared. And the government is not giving faith of, uh, faith of life. He's not saying anything about him. Mm. And yet, every time you yet you listen to hear to the African American community speaking about Cuba, they always are speaking about the blockade. Mm -hmm. They always talking about all oh, lift of the embargo, which is the same discourse of the Cuban dictatorship, and have nothing to do with the realities of the Cuban people. Wow. So Let me, somewhere, somehow, the black community in America, the African Americans, have drank the Kool Aid of the Cuban, the communism. Right, right. I told you that last time, didn't I? Yes, yes, you did. Yes, you did. But it, it, let me just also just reiterate something you said here. Musicians in Cuba 
who wrote a song of dissent 